does sports bet stop people from being able to bet or access their accounts um, if what they're doing is consistently using promotions and inducements through arbitrage to always win? We will seek occasionally to limit some forms of transaction, be that bets or deposits. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So I recently stumbled across this very interesting video and essentially what it's about is there's a government inquiry into sports betting practices and do they ban people who win too often from sports betting? For example, myself. I'm pretty much restricted on all the major bookmakers in Australia. So this particular clip is called from ABC News. Sportsbet CEO Barney Evans explains the company's approach to gamblers. And it's a five minute video explaining how he struggles to answer this one question, which is... Does Sportsbet stop people from being able to bet or access their accounts um, if what they're doing is consistently using promotions and inducements? through arbitrage to always win? We will seek occasionally to limit some forms of transaction, be that bets or deposits, in a number of circumstances. If people are betting on behalf of other individuals, mm -hmm. then we'll intervene there. Um, if their behaviour is seen to be using privileged information and is therefore distorting a market and affecting the prices that other people can bet on, then we'll sure. intervene. Um, if they're in a cooling off period between setting deposit limits, then we won't allow them to transact at that point. If they're betting into highly illiquid markets that are volatile and have very high fluctuations, then we'll reduce the amount yeah. of available stake in those areas. Um, and to the point we made previously, if the model is predicting risk of harm, mm -hmm. then... So the person you saw first, the person who's asking the question is Peter Murphy, a member of parliament. And she is the one leading this investigation into sports betting practices. And the second person, the guy in the suit, is the CEO of Sportsbet, the biggest betting company in Australia. So after she asked that straightforward question, the CEO of Sportsbet answered a few different things, none of which really answered the question. But some of the things he said was if someone is betting on behalf of someone else. So if I was to use a friend's account, that would not be good and that would kind of really be identity theft, I would agree. Um, however, Sportsbet does even have their own thing, which is kind of like hypocritical. They have something called bet with mates, um, which is where you can pull together a group of friends and bet with each other's money, essentially the same thing. Betting on behalf of other people is definitely not a good thing, um, especially if they can't afford to bet, but some people who have been restricted do end up doing this method, not myself personally, but they do get their like family members or friends accounts and end up betting with them to get some additional profit after their own individual accounts were restricted. You also notice that some of the things you said included privileged information and is therefore distorting a market. And it doesn't really go into too much detail of what this is. And I guess he's using this as a gray area to justify certain actions that the company is taking and using this as an excuse for the bans or restrictions they place on certain betters of harm mm -hmm. then we'll intervene as well so if they're winning consistently if they are seen to be acting on privileged information that is distorting a market then yes we will but what's privileged about being mathematically gifted enough to use arbitrage to make to use promotions and betting and inducements in a way that means you can't lose yeah we're not opposed to mathematically gifted customers um, yeah, but we I... do seek to look after the majority of our... So this is something I have to give credit to Sportsbet for, actually, and being honest. Um, when I first signed up, I had to use my full legal name, and anyone with a basic understanding of names and where they're from will recognise straight away that's a Chinese name. But they didn't ban me straight away because, obviously, they should know I'm Chinese, therefore I'm good at maths. So hats off to them for not kicking me off the moment I signed up. But maybe if Sportsbet wants to make more money in the future, that's something they could look at. Customers, and when one customer is using information that might not be accessible to the rest of the market, but from what, a particular what do you mean trainer in a stable, for yeah. example, okay. that might result but in that's, us that's restricting not what I'm, Sorry to interrupt you, but, but that is not what I'm asking you about, clearly. Right? I'm not asking you about... Not what I'm asking. Okay, yeah, it's clear that's not what she is asking, but what the CEO is saying is insider trading is probably going to restrict, end up in a ban for the customer. Um, and I think that they're using that as an excuse to justify the ban of many people. 
Um, so insider trading, for example, what he mentioned is if someone knows the trainer um, of a horse, so they might have insider information on how that horse is feeling or perf- going to perform on that particular race and bet on it or bet against it. Or there's other people who specifically try to gain an advantage by betting live at the racetrack and gaining a quick time advantage by front running, such as hiding in the trees of a racetrack to, and then betting live to gain the upper hand on outdated bookmaker odds or, for example, a common practice in tennis such as court siding is generally not allowed. However, when I first started betting, um, especially on the NRO and AFL, I actually had no understanding of those sports at all. I wouldn't even be able to tell you all the rules. I didn't know what an NRO try was, um, and I don't think I'd be able to name a single player at that time. So it had nothing to do with insider knowledge. I had no knowledge at all except the mathematical side, and that is where I made my profit. I'm not asking you about a version of insider trading. I'm asking whether sports bet stops people from betting if you, if they're winning and you have no evidence that they're a trainer in a horse in a in a stable, but because they're able to use the promotions and inducements in a way which means that they can't lose. I, I maintain the answer that I gave previously, you, that you if behaviour is question. distorting a market and hindering the ability of any one of our 2.2 million other customers from getting a bet on at the price that would have occurred, then we will intervene. So is that a, is that a yes then, if you've got somebody who is... Okay, so when he says behaviour is question. distorting a market... That is probably possible with like um, non-promotional arbitrage where you actually do need to size up a lot to make like a 1% or 2% return. So you'd be betting like hundreds of thousands of dollars at a single time on both sides and that could potentially skew the market. But when it comes to like promotions and inducements that Peter is referring to, that shouldn't really have any effect on the market because generally these sports books cap that promotion at $50 or even $25 stakes anyways. So that really shouldn't have much market impact at all is using what is publicly available and is winning too much that you're going to stop them from betting. If we believe that they're acting on information that's not available to the rest of the market, then yes. And what if they're not acting on information that's not available to the rest of the market, but they are consistently... We'd strive to offer them a fair bet. But are you stopping them from betting? I don't understand why it's difficult to say yes or no to this question. We've had had evidence from people that suggests that if... um, People with um, betting accounts, sports betting accounts, are winning all the time, particularly if they're using promotions and inducements, then they're stopped from being able to continue betting. And as I'm sure you heard me say um, to a previous witness, I personally know somebody who has been in that situation. So it's not a, it's not a difficult question. Is sports bet stopping people who are simply making money from continuing to be able to do that? If we believe, if I beg your pardon, if we believe that they're acting with information that the rest of the market doesn't have, and if their behaviour is distorting the market, which means that other customers' experience is affected, then we will take action. So if their behaviour is distorting very... the market because they're winning... Yeah, so as you can see, it's clearly not answering the question, but I do feel a little bad for the Sportsbet CEO. Sportsbet is actually one of the better bookies. They don't ban you as quickly, and they let you bet for a longer period of time, and also... Um, when they do reduce your stake, it's reduced not to extent as other bookmakers such as Ladbrokes, which sometimes wouldn't let you bet at all, not even one cent. But Sportsbet might like refer your bets to the trading team and see if it's profitable to them. And if it's not, they might reduce your size down to like $20 or something like that. Then they, they stop from betting. I'll let you have the last word on that topic. No, I'm, I've, I've given I don't you the want same the last word. I know you have, but it's not actually, actually answering my question. Put aside the insider knowledge. Like, if you believe they're distorting the market, are you saying they're distorting the market because they're using the promotions and inducements in order to continually win? Is that what, is that what you mean by distorting the market? Yes, that's what I mean by distorting the market, where it occurs as a result of people having... Yeah, I, I once say again, like, all these promotions and inducements that they do offer are generally capped at 25 to $50 stakes um, because they used to incentivize small recreational punters to get started betting with them and then get addicted into the process. Um, I don't think that can really distort the market from just $50 bets. Unique information that the rest of the market does not have. Okay. And assuming they don't have that unique information, assuming they're just distorting the market, by being smart enough to always win using um, inducements and promotions, are they stopped from betting then? Assuming that they are using unique information 
we would intervene. No, assuming they're not. Well, we don't make that assumption. We have teams of people okay. who look at the data. All right. Yeah, so you can see he looks very uncomfortable and he's still avoiding the question. When he says we have teams of people looking at the data, that's, I assume, is referring to their internal trading team, which is their team of mathematically gifted people that they've hired probably for higher than average salaries of their usual employees because they have sharper minds and are able to see which kind of betters are taking advantage of them through either promotions or through arbitrage, where to spot them is not too hard. If you're only betting on promotions, that's very obvious to see. If you're betting on arbitrage opportunities, that's slightly harder to see, but it's still possible because they have something called the closing line value. So for example, if you bet on something and then that price moves down and you got a better price than what it should be, they can see that you've always been getting better prices and that is a signal for them to probably place restrictions on your account. But it does take someone who has more experience to be able to see that and that is the people on their trading team and they're the ones who make the decisions on whether they place restrictions on your account. I'm going to say to you, Mr Evans, that um, I'm taking what you're saying as a yes because of the way you're answering me and not engaging with my questions. Yes, you stop um, people who are consistently winning um, from betting unless you choose to actually engaged with the way I'm asking the question. That's how I'm going to take your answer, your evidence. That's your prerogative. I've answered the question three or four times. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can see my colleagues' faces. I feel like they might have the same view of me as your answers um, to that one. At the end of the day, Sportsbook and these other bookmakers, such as Ladbrokes and Neds, are still businesses and they have to make money. How they make money is through their customers, which is users, and they do so by... Customers are paying for the business or service they provide, which is probably, or it should be, the entertainment of having a bet on and creating more excitement when it comes to watching the games or the races. But they are paying for that service through negative expected value. So it's not a guaranteed loss or guaranteed payment to the bookmakers, but in the long run, it will cost the customer money and give that money to the bookmakers because their odds are just not the fair odds. And that is the most important thing to understand. And I will say that Sportsbet is actually one of the better bookies out there. That's why they have a, such a large market share compared to the other bookmakers who have worse odds and they ban you quicker. I actually made a fair bit of Sportsbet by first, in my first two months of betting, just trying to be stupid and do a lot of stupid bets like five leg parlays or five leg multis. I'm betting on my favorite football teams and making sure I made a loss. Um, and then after two months, when their trading team probably thought I was nothing to worry about, I was a good customer in their eyes, then that's when I started completely hitting the promotions and hitting the arbitrage opportunities and making a lot of them before I eventually got restricted. Other bookmakers that are a lot worse, like the smaller ones, and also like especially Ladbrokes and Neds, they might ban you within like a week or after you only placed a few bets. And they'll also restrict you from betting on certain markets to the point where you can't even bet a single cent. There's also cases where I've heard that certain sports books, especially the smaller ones, are trying to scare you from being able to withdraw your funds by asking for very personal bank statements, passports. If they don't do that, then the sports book will basically just keep their funds and not let them withdraw. It hasn't happened to me, but I've heard it can be a thing. So that's the sports betting industry for you. I'm very glad the government is looking into this and hopefully we get some regulation changes very soon.